Linus love on the button. Can we can we bluff Linus, guys? That is the question. Or is Limitless gonna get involved as well? Then it's gonna be hard. No, it's only Linus. Okay, okay. Hi there, fellow poker enthusiast. Welcome to the Poker Ambition channel and to a new video in which we are going to be discussing that thing that everyone tells you not to do, which is to dunk bet. Okay, they might throw out a little 20% here and there on the turn when the board pairs, but other than that, they tell you stay away from it. And I'll be going through some hands where I decided to dunk bet the flop, turn or river in order to try and win the hand because just like in the last video, we don't have a great hand, unfortunately. So we're gonna desperately try to win the pot. If you, like me, also like dunk bets, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get into the hands. The first hand we're gonna start off and we're gonna try to bluff OTB Red Baron using dunk betting strategies. We decided to limp in, we face an ISO and I decide to call from the small blind. The flop is a nine, a jack five, and I decide to lead out flop. Now in general, I won't go too much into a very in-depth analysis of when to dunk bet, how to dunk bet, et cetera, et cetera, why it's such a great EV boosting play. If you wanna learn more about that, I made a whole chapter in the mechanics of poker about this chop topic. But in general, it will always have something to do with uh, favorable, runouts or flop textures giving range versus range interaction okay that's usually one of the main points obviously there's various other benefits but in this case if you look at my limp call range from the small blend it will connect quite good with the sport so from that perspective i decide to dunk otb red baron sticky as he is decides to tag along and the turn is a 10 which again would favor my range quite heavily um, not necessarily that he doesn't have king queen for example compared to me but how big king queen proportion wise is a part of his range compared to mine mine i will have it percentage wise a higher percentage of the time okay and it's also less likely guys that he has seven eight or queen eight or king queen because we have like the nut blockers so this hand will probably go in some bets i decide to block again now you could make an argument to Again, split your range into big sizings and small sizings, which I think sounds reasonable. Uh, you could definitely have your king eight suited together with maybe your king queen off. Um, I think that sounds like an okay strategy to use, but I decided to dunk bet small again, which from a range perspective also has some benefits. OTB calls, always hard to get that guy off a hand. And the river is an ace. And at this point, I kind of have to decide uh, what kind of hands do I want to be betting? Do I want to, for example, in, still be betting a hand like King-10? Probably not. So do I still want to bet a hand like Jack-Queen? King-Jack? Probably not. So I will probably start betting a little bit bigger. I went for a three-quarters pot bet, which I think is fine. Uh, I think if you want to be over betting, it's probably good to have a spade in your hand, blocking more of a villain's absolute stronger hands. So I think with this bet, you know, it's, it's fine. I'm kind of saying that I have two pair. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense for this uh, for this bet. Also, I had like seven, eight, I think makes a lot of sense. So I definitely like my play. OTB, luckily guys, he did fold. Uh, so we win the first little dunk bet pot. Let me know if you would have won that pot or played this hand the same. The next hand we're gonna look at is a hand where I three bet from the small blind. Could also call uh, dangerous player in the big blind so gonna stay away from that uh, flop is quite favorable for me uh, two high cards if you three bet linear from the small blind uh, so i decide to approach this spot with a small bet could even go a little bit smaller get a call from dr lock the turn uh, brings some connectedness and i actually decide to check this hand i don't really want to get raised uh, face a 400 dollar bet I call. I'm not really going to check fold. Obviously, I have a draw. And the river is a 10. And this is actually a, po a point where I think we do have some sort of a jack advantage in terms of maybe hand like queen jack suited or pocket jacks. I think are way more likely in my range than in his range. He does still have, I think, an ace jack advantage. Uh, so I don't think we should just rip it in. And 
instead I went actually for a little bit of small bet in general benefits of betting smaller is that you can bet more hands um, so I could for example maybe not also bet a hand like pocket tens or queen ten king ten suited but mainly I would say a jack but I cannot bet too big you know because he also has, still has ace jack so I think this is an interesting spot. I don't think he has a lot of air. Well, if I check, he can bluff me and I cannot really call. Uh, so we're desperately trying to, trying to win the pot. And he indeed found the fault. So I think this was a good example of trying to uh, win the pot by dunk betting the river. Next hand, we have ace jack offsuit. We decide to call. It's a little bit of a smaller race and we're quite deep. And three betting, especially three betting in general, and especially offsuit Broadways will go down in value. And obviously, big blind bets, very good player. Flop King 10 8. I decide to throw out a little bet. Uh, I don't think I will be dunk betting this board a whole bunch. Um, you could even make an argument for betting a little bit bigger, but I don't really like this board for that. I think betting, dunk betting, if you don't bet, dunk bet small is fine. This hand. It's okay, uh, but I wouldn't do this range or anything. Hope Floki decides to stick along and big blind bets as well. Queen, please dealer. Queen, 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 queen. No queen, but a jack. Does give us now an open ender. And I decided to bet again. I did decide to upsize as two players called. So basically I'm gonna bet less weak weaker hands less merged uh, so i'll go a little bit more on the polarized side usually increasing your sizing hope floki calls big blind bats fold well that's one down let's see if we can get the other guy to fold as well the river is a four basically sort of everything misses and i decide that right now i am going to tell the story that i have a great hand okay running 868 if i'm not mistaken yes 868 so it's uh like a hundred 50% ish over bet and now hope Floki has a dilemma if he has basically any hand that is only one pair he's kind of in trouble he did indeed decide to call and he actually rivered us with the king four that which is very unfortunate I think if he doesn't ring uh, if, he, if he doesn't river a four uh, I think he's definitely folding or at least a high percentage of the time so again I like my play um, just unfortunate that the river brought the four. Under the gun raises, we are in the big blind and we def defend the jack queen. We actually decided to lead the flop. Um, a good flop for me. He raised 2.5x, uh, 2. no, 2.25x actually. No, 2.5x. In general, higher stakes, uh, less rake, so you defend a little bit wider, then this kind of flops become very favorable. So I decide to lead out, which I think for people who know a little bit about dunk betting, this is quite a common spot. So, broad calls. On the turn, it's a spot where we're definitely going to be splitting. We're going to be continuing dunk bet a small some percentage of the time and sometimes big. I decided that this hand is fine in a small bet and Proto sticks along. And now the river is a seven, which is basically catching. You know, we don't have a straight, but it feels like we have a straight, you know, the, those moments, uh, especially the, the, the biggest favor we have is in the Jack 10 offsuit region. Um, and we're gonna kind of use that by betting very big, 1.7K in 700. Uh, in general, I think we have a very big 10X advantage. Uh, and like I said, I don't think he has 10 jack off from under the gun and we could have it in the big blind, usually allowing you to bet quite big and put a lot of pressure. He thought about it for a little while and he did decide to fold another little pot here for the Wacko, um, which I'm very happy to take. So thank you very much. Linus love on the button. Can we can we bluff Linus guys? That is the question. Or is Limitless gonna get involved as well? Then it's gonna be hard. No, it's only Linus. Okay, okay. Well, we did actually flop something this time. We decide to dunk out the flop again. Linus calls. On the turn, we can kind of go either way. I don't mind betting small again. I did actually. Uh, again, a spot where you could definitely be splitting. Small bet, big bet. That's usually how I go. Or how I roll, if you could say it. 
Mine is calls again, so basically if he calls my small bet twice, I think we usually have the best hand and on the river, I think we can start to get some value. So basically I was hoping for a brick and make a big bet. However, a 10 obviously is not really a brick and I decided to check. Now Linus make throws out a little bet and I actually, I actually thought about it for a little while and actually decided to make the call. Uh, what do you think Linus has? Do, do, does he have me beat or do we have the world's best player uh, by the throat and we actually win a nice little pot here? And it was actually the second thing. He actually decided to turn the three into a bluff, uh, which I think is a, a decent play by him. And actually, I think he's capable of this kind of plays. That's also why I check called the river. So if you don't think your opponent does anything uh, in this regard, so don't think check calling the river is good. But obviously, you know, we can give Linus some credit. Another spot we open, we have the deuce three suited. All kind of goodness can happen with the deuce three suited. So we definitely stick along. Similar as the 10 jack on the, what was it? 986, uh, we now have a 475. The board gets a little bit lower, um, which usually favors when you're bottom versus big blind. It was also an anti table. He did open three X, but then again, it's three handed on 2K. So you can still defend quite wide in the big blind. So this board will then definitely connect. Give me up calls. Turn we have a similar spot, probably a split betting strategy will apply. I bet small again, which actually with this hand, I do not like. Yeah, I would have actually preferred to see myself over betting this exact combination. Um, but I decided to bet small again, which, okay, is, is an option, but I think this candidate is better in an over bet. And then as played, if we would have over bet the turn, I would have uh, probably made a very big bet again on the river. Now I did actually go for the big bet, but I think it would have been nicer if we would have over betted the turn and then just probably ship or stack in, but it's kind of the same idea, right? On the river, basically, we're not saying we're value betting a seven anymore. We're also not really saying that we value better jack. Maybe we could still have some small bets on the river that mainly like a jack exit diamonds or something. Or maybe if we would not nah, jack them, we would not barrel turn. Um, so jack exit diamond, jack exit club would make sense in a small bet. But I think big bet jack is usually the way to go here. And I decided that deuce three is a fine candidate for that. Okay, let's say he has a hand like ace eight or something. There's just not much he can do. And give me up did indeed decide to fold. So another little pot here won by the Weko after dunking. Would you have won the pot as well or should you start implementing dunk bets in your game? Okay, that is the question. Bit too easy, raising from the sort of UTG in a four-handed game, cut off. Cut off had sub tights, tries to stag al tag along. I have something that can flop a straight flush, so obviously I'm present. We decided not to dunk the flop. I don't think dunking on this flop would make a lot of sense. A uh, bit too easy, does decide to see bet, and we have an option, check call, check race. In general, if we, I would much rather prefer, uh, basically in general, if you want to build a big pot, it's better to have more equity. So if we have deuce four or diamonds, I think that's a fine hand to check race. Probably your first, uh, you deuce four of diamonds and you deuce four of clubs are probably your first picks, then deuce four of hearts and then basically dukes for a spades but i don't think i will ever check her this hand cool turn is a 10 and this is kind of the most um sort of obvious spot to dunk or at least that i see happen most in in today's games or in past games as well basically the board pairs and after i check call uh basically i don't have pure air anymore a lot of the time my range is going to have a lot of 10x uh, or maybe like a pocket pair, like sixes, sevens or a five. So my range is quite pair heavy where he can still have a hand like, let's say he has a hand like jack nine, jack nine of hearts and I have uh, pocket sevens. If I bet small and he folds, it's quite a good result for me. And obviously I have a quite a big 10x advantage, I would say. Again, not necessarily... Percentage wise, we have the same, but percentage from the range that I check call compared to the range that he see bets. Uh, proportional wise, I probably have more tents. He calls. And the river is a club. 